Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Eurocon Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Sunday, November 8th, 2020, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Brethren, if the message declared by angels was valid and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at the first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard him. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed according to his own will. For it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou carest for him, that is make him a little lower? while then the angels and thou hast crowned him with glory and honor putting everything in subjection under his feet now in putting everything in subjection to him he left nothing outside his control as it is we do not see everything in subjection to him but we see jesus who for a little while was made lower than the angels crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of god he might taste death for everyone for it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should be made the pioneer of their salvation, perfected through suffering. And today's Gospel is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 8, verses 41 through 56. At that time, there came a man tamed, named Jesus, excuse me, at that time, there came a man to Jesus named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue. And falling at Jesus' feet, he besought him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was dying. And as he went, the people pressed around him. And a woman who had had an issue of blood for twelve years, and had spent all of her living upon physicians, and could not be healed by anyone, came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. Immediately her flow of blood ceased, and Jesus said, Who was it that touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, the multitudes surround you and press upon you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I perceive that power has gone forth from me. And when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him, and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And while he was still speaking, a man from the ruler's house came and said, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any more. But Jesus, on hearing this, answered him, Do not fear, only believe, and she shall be well. And when he came to the house, he permitted no one to enter with him except Peter and John and James, and the father and mother of the child. And all were weeping and bewailing her. But he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But taking her by the hand, he called and said, child arise and her spirit returned and she got up at once and he directed that something should be given to her to eat and her parents were amazed but he charged them to tell no one what had happened so today in the church we remember the angelic powers particularly the archangels and we have several by name we have michael we have gabriel of course we know those two from the scriptures themselves we also have Raphael, who is also found in the scriptures in the book of Tobit. And then we have Uriel, Salafiel, Jugudiel, and Barachiel. Now, there are seven. There are actually many more than that. Um, we think when we say the Anaphora, we say there are, even though around these stand thousands of archangels and ten thousands of angels and the cherubim and the seraphim and so on. So we have all sorts of angelic beings that are around us. If you look at the... Um, calling of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 6 of the book of Isaiah. You see Isaiah's divine vision where there are seraphim flying back and forth ministering to the altar as God sits on his throne. You have in Ezekiel the story of the cherubim, these other angelic beings that aren't cute little precious moment little baby looking things but instead are terrifying four-headed creatures that face in every direction look like wheels and have faces that aren't human some of them are like cows and, and and eagles and lions and so forth but the purpose of an angel is to do the will of god and that's basically it they are messengers that's actually what angel means angel and evangelism actually have the same root and it, you know evangelism means good news 
So angel is news or message, and angels are incarnate messages. They are not even incarnate. They are actualized messages. They are messengers of God. They go and they deliver messages to and fro. For example, Gabriel goes and delivers a message to Mary, the mother of God, and she says um, to the angel, you know, they have a, a, a discussion together, and Gabriel tells her that she is going to conceive and bear a son, and Mary has this discussion with her. Gabriel also goes and visits Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, and tells him that his wife is going to bear a child. Gabriel goes and talks to Joseph and tells him not to worry because the birth that Mary is going to have is of divine conception, and then also warns him in a dream to go to Egypt to avoid persecution. Michael is seen in the prophecy of Daniel and is mentioned later on in the New Testament in one of the epistles of St. Peter. And so the angels are found in all sorts of different areas in the scriptures and in the stories of our church. And as I said, all of them are functionaries. They serve specific purposes. At the time of our baptisms, we are appointed a guardian angel that then works with us and helps us and guides us through spiritual pitfalls. And actually, at marriage, another angel is bestowed upon the marriage couple. So there's, they become, because they become a new being. Husband and wife become one flesh. And just like that is a new birth, so an angel is assigned to the marriage. And so there's all sorts of different examples. But if you take a look at the letter to the Hebrews, you see today that right now the angels are seen as higher than humans because they are constantly in the presence of God. That's where they exist. They don't exist anywhere else. They're not like Michael Landon wandering around doing their thing. That's not how it works. Okay, but it does work in the way that their job and their task is to minister in any way that God sees fit. They are God's servants. They minister to the altar. They minister to his will. They execute his will as he commands. They are in his presence, which human beings more or less are not, as long as they live on earth. And so they are these contact points though between God and earth so they do go back and forth from time to time but always fulfilling the will of God but again going back to the epistle of the Hebrews when we think about what's there the mention is that humans even though we are below angels at this point will be above angels later on the second coming because God sees fit to send his son the father sends his son, who then goes and delivers humanity by tasting death, delivers humanity and returns it back to its original state. Because you have to remember that God sees us as his special children. We are made in his image. We aspire to his likeness. And when we do attain that likeness, then we will be found to be greater even than the angels. We will be in a presence of God as his perfected beings, fully in his presence, not fully knowing him because no one can know his essence in totality, even in that state, because we will never assume his nature. My goodness, we have a hard enough time understanding human nature as it is, but to try to understand divine nature, that's almost an impossibility. At any rate, we will be seen as those that are worthy of being in God's presence continually, singing praises, giving thanks to God for our newfound immortal life that is in participation in his divinity. So we participate in God's divinity through faith and through belief as opposed to through nature. And God, through his grace, is the one who imparts that divinity to us so that we may be able to worship and in spirit and in truth. So today we remember the angels and we give thanks to God for their ministry that they are able to come and to assist us in that path towards salvation. And we pray that our guardian angels will ever work with us to keep us on the straight and narrow. And may God continue to bless us through the presence of his angels and through the grace that he has imparted to us through the scriptures, the teachings of the church fathers, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is ours in baptism. All right, so may God bless you and keep you and your family today and always in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Have a great day. Thank you again for joining me and have, and we'll see you tomorrow. God willing.